Hey everybody, welcome to Bill Sky the C++ and C Guy. In this video, we're going to talk about command line arguments that you can actually code into your program itself. We're going to do a little overview of what that means, and then we're going to actually show you the code to do it. Pretty cool. Let's get going. Okay, I've got Linux running here, and I'm just going to go ahead and stick with this. You can do the same thing on Windows. It works on Windows. It works on Mac. Everything is the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a C++ project. And in this case, I'm going to do a 64-bit C++ project. And I'm just going to use Genie. I'm not going to use Visual Studio Code. I'm not going to use Eclipse. So let's say CPP. Okay. So let's jump right into this code. Now, what is it What is it that I mean by a command line argument? Well, the first thing I'm going to do here, I, I want to show you what a command line argument is. I'm going to go ahead and, and you can do this on Windows, you can do this on Mac, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to, actually, let's go ahead and let's copy the main.cpp file. Now, normally what you would do is you would right click on it, say copy, and then you could right click on it and then say paste. You could even on some operating systems, drag it holding down the control key and it'll copy it. But what's actually happening underneath the covers? Well, the GUI, the desktop environment that you're using, actually calls operating system commands to do that copying. And the operating system command needs to know what is the name of the source file. In this case, it was main.cpp. And what should be the name of the destination file? Now, if you're doing dragging, dropping, the file manager or the GUI is going to name it for you, but then it sends those two arguments to the operating system function copy, and then the operating system copies those. Also, to make this a little bit more down to earth or, or get it home, I'm going to actually do the command itself. Now on Windows it's copy, but on Mac and Linux it's CP. So I'm going to do an ls here to list all my files. I'm going to say cp main.cpp main2.cpp. So these are the arguments. The name of the program is cp, copy. On Windows it would be copy. The first argument after that is the source file. What are we going to copy from? And the second, second argument is where are we going to copy it to? We're going to copy it to main2.cpp. And if I go ahead and press enter, all of a sudden now we have main2.cpp. Well, how does the cp command, how does the copy program know about that? How does it know what the name of the source file is and what the name of the destination file is? Now you might say, well, it just knows it. No, somebody had to code that. Somebody actually had to write the cp command, the copy command, and in Windows it's copy, and it had to somehow get that communication from the user. Even the GUI, if I hold down the control key and drag, even the GUI needs to know what is that file that the programmer or that the user is dragging, where are they dragging it to. It has to know that information and that's where the command line arguments come in. So I'm gonna go and edit this file. Now, it depends upon the integrated development environment you're using, but Everything is, is contained inside the main function. So to go over this once again, the main function is the entry point in your program. Int is the return that's going to return back to the operating system or whatever program called it to say, was did it run okay? Normally a return of zero means it ran just fine. A return of nine or 32,000 or something might mean that there was an error in it. Inside of the main functions parentheses, again, it depends upon the integrated development environment you're using that created your template, created your CPP file, but these are the two standardized arguments that get sent to the main entry point. An integer and an array of C strings, char, asterisk, argv. Now these can be named anything. I could name this Frank and I could name this Mary. It, it doesn't matter. They're just variables that your program can use. So I'm going to go back to argv and argc. Now argc stands for argument count. Argv, I guess argument vector maybe. Uh, it's not really a C++ vector, but maybe that's what argv stands for. If anybody out there knows what the argv stands for in reality, I would love to hear it. So you can interrogate or you can use that data directly. Like I'm going to say count 
the total arguments sent to the program is argc. Let's save and build that. And let's run it. And okay, so it printed out the welcome to C++, and then it said the total argument sent to the program is one. Wait a minute, I just typed in the program name. Guess what? The program name is considered an argument because what you're doing is the program is being executed through the operating system and the operating system sees this as an argument using the interface of typing the command in the operating system. Strange, but you know, it, it gives your program the knowledge of where is it located on the hard drive, things like that. Now, so they'll, that'll tell you the number of arguments. Let me go ahead and put in some real arguments here. I'll say one, two, three. Now, it looks like I've got three arguments, but remember the main, the program file name itself is an argument. And now it says the total arguments sent to their program is four. Pretty neat, huh? Let's go ahead and now let's access these arguments. In this case, one, two, and three. Now, this is the same in C and C++. So if you're looking at this as a C programmer, this it'll work exactly the same way, except you're not going to use C out, or like I like to say, count. You're not going to be using count and kin, or C in, to access the data. Let's see if we can get to that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print off the arguments. Now we don't want to print off more arguments than we've we were sent. So we're going to you create a for loop that's you going to use argz. So I'm argz. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero i less than argc i plus plus and i'm just going to say count argv i and i think i've got too many closing brackets there and let's end the four all right so let's see how that works Okay, there's main one, two, and three. Oh, wow, okay, so this worked. It's pretty cool, it worked the first time. So you've got main, that's our first argument, which is the program name. You've got one, that's the value there. You've got two, that's the value there. And you've got three, that's the value there. So that's how your program can now be given arguments on what you want it to do. Like for instance, let's say you're gonna be creating a new copy command. The first argument would be the source file. The second argument would be the destination file. Maybe the third argument would be another destination. So you can make multiple copies of the same file. And you could also specify things like location. So I could say, well, I want this to go into the home directory. So that's where my file is located in my documents directory and I want to just copy it to two and three, and you can see it puts the entire directory of where your home, where your home file is, or where that file is that you're wanting to copy. So that's how you access those, those command lines. Now, what if you wanted to access those command lines as numbers? How would you do that? Well, let's take a quick look. Okay, so let's say your program is going to add two numbers together and you're going to so you're going to type main and then the two numbers that you want to add together. Well, first of all, you want to make sure in your program that the program is receiving the number of arguments that it needs. So let's say that this program is just going to add two numbers together. Well, you can't add C strings and these are C strings. These aren't strings. These are C strings. So how do I, I have to convert each C string into a number and then I have to add, add them together. But what if I type in more arguments than the program needs? Well, what you want to do is you want to check that and then you want to display an error message if that's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if argc is greater than three or argc is less than three. So if it's greater than three or less than three, I want to display an error message. Now you could, now this is negative logic, right? You could go ahead and say, if it's equal to three, then that's perfect. So I'm just going to say count format of the command is main number one, number two. 
and you might want to give them an error message. Else. Okay, so let's see if that works. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and let's go ahead and build it. Let's run it. And this time I'm just going to say dot slash main. Error, invalid use of the command. Okay, let's say one, still an error. Two, ah, okay, I didn't get an error because I just typed in two numbers. Okay, error, invalid use of the command because I typed in more arguments than necessary. So that's what you want to do here. You want to check to see if the correct number of arguments are used. Okay, once that's done, let's go ahead now and let's do the conversion. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do something like this. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create my, let's say we're just going to do, inter oh, let's say we're going to do floats. So I'm going to say double argument one. Double argument two equals zero. Again, this is the same in C and C++. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say double one. Is it double one? No, it's argument one. And I want to say ATOF. And in the parentheses, I'm going to say argc of one. Because remember, argc of zero, or it has to be argv. Argv of zero is actually the program name. And then let's put the second argument in, let's put the second argument, or the third argument, the, actually the second one I typed, and then we're going to say argument one plus equals argument Two, then I'm going to say count the sum of the numbers is okay let's see if that works and I got too many square brackets there oh I have too many square brackets and not enough closed parentheses Okay, let's take a look at how this worked. So what happened was um, the program printed out this stuff. You might, I might want to actually comment those out now that I know how to work, how to use it. However, now you can see the sum. Two plus three is equal to, or one plus two is equal to three. Let's put in some more interesting. And so we're, we're becoming more and more functional. You might also want to make it all double, you know, make it five digits on the fraction or whatever. So I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what's best to use when it comes to converting a C string into a number. Uh, to actually validate whether it's a valid number, you might want to use like the STDO, STOD. Um, However, if you're stuck with C, you might not have that capability. So that's actually a completely different discussion about how to convert C strings and strings into numbers. Strings in C++ are much easier, but C strings are not. You could, you could go through one character at a time and make sure that it's a valid string that way. C string, you could, again, remember C strings are actually arrays of chars. You could do a, have a for loop that keeps going until you get to the end of the, until you get to backslash zero, which is the null terminator. Uh, there are some functions out there on C++ to help you out. C is a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to leave it up to you to make absolutely sure, uh, because if this is a non-numeric value, you're going to get a very strange error. And let me show you what that is. Well, you actually don't get a very strange error. What happens is it tries to convert the ABC into uh, a number, but it doesn't. It, it, it just basically makes it zero. And you can see right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4 plus zero is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, if I was printing out more than three decimal digits. So in this case, the C didn't really hurt us too much by having an invalid value, but you don't want to just do that. You might want to actually tell them that they've got an invalid value. 
So that's it. So that's the very simple way of accessing the arguments sent to your program using command line arguments. Pretty simple. You can even do this in a Sundle language, which I'm going to do pretty soon. It's a lot more complicated, but it works exactly the same. Well, hope to see it in my next video.